communist. The market small press <laughs> comics. Small communist. Small communist press comics. Uh, <laughs> today is a special video because we're interviewing uh, Larry Johnson, uh, one of the all-time greats in small press, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so we, uh, Steve and I, have come up with a number of questions for Larry, and uh, we're going to make him answer them. So <laughs> yeah, and, and Our, I got a copy. I'll just say I have a copy here. Look at uh, that. Ooh. I Look think this that. was your very first small press comic, your very first fanzine. Yes. It was the yes. first one that was ever published. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a and how long ago was condition. that? It says uh, 1973. Early. Yep. 73. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And if you'll, if you'll notice, if you look at like, for instance, well, any page here, any page of, of Larry's artwork. Oh yeah. He already had that style. That, yeah. That, that fluid style. Yeah. He, he yeah. already had that intact. Was, this <laughs> one was a, very much wordy. He doesn't put as many words into his comics as he did back in those days. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it was even then, I mean, this stuff is totally, uh, this, it holds up well over the years. This is great yeah. stuff. Well, my, my big thing was uh, uh, Tales of Fantasy. And I was a subscriber. Right. I don't know if you remember that or not, Larry. Oh, or, okay. And uh, how many years did you do Tales of Fantasy? Um, I started in January of 88. Oh, my gosh. It, it went until the end of 2015, and that's 71 issues. Oh, my gosh. And in fact, this year, I just put up number 72, a brand new Tales of Fantasy full-color, full-size comic book. So it's a whole new era for Tales uh, of Fantasy. Oh, Bogola. This one, or is it a different one? That you're no, it's a, it's a new one. Oh, okay. I got Tales of Fantasy. This is number 18. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I thought maybe it was this one, but okay. Uh -huh. no, no, no. This, is Madam, have... this has Madame Boogaloo on the cover. Yeah. Here we go. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. I right, have to get that. I've got to, I've got to do a reprint soon. I'm almost out of these. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I was water. Hang on. <laughs> He's gone again. <laughs> I'm so prepared. I'm so prepared, you know. I'm grab my water here. Yeah, me too. I was thinking the same thing. When you're talking a lot, you know, this yeah. is what happens. You have these meetings and they blah, blah, blah. And we're just getting started. So, yeah. Well, how did ah. you come up? How did you come up with the character, Madame Boogala? Boogala. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's see. Well, this is um, I'll just show everybody. This is Madame Bougala on the cover of this one. Back, hang on a second. Okay. It's nice. It is. I, I found the book. Ooh. This is a book. Okay. Jean Paul Clerbe, The Gypsies, a French oh. author from 1960, wrote okay. all about the gypsies in here. Mm -hmm. and look at this lady in here. There she is. Yeah. yeah. Yep. She's yep. A, she's That's just magically the. The Puri Day, the wise old woman. But um, Bugala, I would say what I wanted to talk about was basically uh, you come with an earlier incarnation of this mm -hmm. character, and they sort of evolve into another character. So I had a character named Madame Pula when I was a kid, <laughs> a younger teenager, uh -huh. and she uh, was a gypsy fortune teller type guy. She's kind of a faker. And she appeared in uh, actually one of the Rena stories. Now, Rena was like a Doctor Strange ripoff kind of I gal. Rena. Okay. Rena, she was in Mysterious Adventures in 1973 when I was self-publishing. Right. And so she appeared there. In fact, that adventure was printed back in the 80s by Jim Main and Fazit, I think, at one time. The second Rena, it's the same. So in 1987, I, I was trying to do a new Rena story. I said, okay, she's okay. But somehow this old lady idea mm -hmm. came along, Bugala, and her son, Gumar, Gumar. Yeah, Gumar. Oh, Gumar. Yeah. Okay. Uh, obedient, yeah. yes, mother. Kind of <laughs> yeah. And so she came along. And I, uh, you know, here's I'm kind of free ranging in my talk here because okay. one part of my one part of my art influences another part or something that I'm doing in a whole other form. And her very first story was called the Magic Scarf. She had a, a little I boutique and a scarf, and this lady came along and the scarf wrapped around her face and made her fly off and she had to have an affair with Gumar and all this stuff. And, uh, but that, that became 
that was from a theme we did years ago called scarf person with a, a scarf had gone all around a person's head and they uh, had some kind of magic things happening and that that as a further thing I'm, I'm rambling a bit but yeah. that was in a Zooey story the land of the scarves which was the oh, last oh, issue of Zooey, Zooey yeah. which became the there first is. issue of tales of fantasy and oh. this was a scarf peddler who actually brought these scarves to the city of Arlong and it wrapped around people's heads and let them fly off to this other city where he used them as slaves and all. So, <laughs> but, so the scarf, and scarf, I could go on and on about scarf person because years ago, <laughs> and here, let me, let me just give another little area. Because ages ago in my 20s, we had a character named scarf person because I lived in a house, uh, apartment house with a lot of young 20s and like every night is like a party, you know back then yeah and my friend diana brought some scarves by one night and there's like these silk colorful scarves we put it said what do i do i put one all over my head and and tied it and said, oh scarf person scarf person so <laughs> so we'd have our parties and everybody's getting high and whatnot well back in the day yeah, and yeah those were the days. so <laughs> so all of a sudden scarf friends would appear and never say a word and move around all and then leave and say, wow this character's interesting so suddenly scarf person became I did a comic book, uh, a wordless comic book with this character, and uh, poetry. And Brian made a film with me starring as this character. Really? And we made a, we made a second film in 1980 called Jesus. Exclusion. And my boyfriend at the time, what was his name? Jim. Oh, Jim, I know. Oh, we played character X, character Y. I can't remember which one I played. But I had the scarf around my head for almost all the <laughs> film. I'm doing a, a self-portrait with the scarf person <laughs> as, uh, with a painting. And you it's should a great film. You should re release was the, that was film. The, as, was the film eight news. millimeter? Or how it did you do it? Super eight. And Super eight. News. Yeah. Brian recently restored this film and oh. it's on YouTube. You're kidding. Exclusion. His channel, Brian Lee, L-E-E. -E. You okay. look him up and there it's an 18 minute film and I think it holds up really well. It's I'm going to look that up for sure. It's black and white and Oh, it's like if you think about Salvador Dali and that sort of thing going on, mm -hmm. that's the kind of thing. Exclusion. Larry, and how do you how do you spell Brian? So we D can look this up. Uh, the B R I A N. B R I A N. Got it. Okay, and, we'll, we'll look uh, that up. He restored it, and we had a Ravel soundtrack. Because one night he's trying to years ago he had the film together, and he says we're trying to find proper music. I brought over this Ravel record of this boat on the ocean and all, and the, 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 somehow. The whole rhythm of this great romantic music went so well with everything in the film that it, 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 I can't even describe it. It was perfectly descriptive for the whole film. So it's 18 minutes and he just restored it. And it's a really, I, I think see it's, that. I, I'm kind of biased, but I think it's. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I got it. It's kind of nostalgic that. looking at it, but it's kind of nice to see. And I think people can get a lot out of it. Yeah. But that character, as I say, was in other forms of art and then went into my comics. Whoop, oh, oh my God. phone. <laughs> uh oh, you disappeared. Can you hear us? Oh, oh dear, I've got low battery. Hang on a second. Oh, okay. Can you plug it in? Oh, no. <laughs> this shoots up a lot of stuff here. Yeah, see if you can plug it in there. Yeah, if you could plug yeah. it in. Let's see if so I can while plug we're it. waiting here, while we're waiting here, I, I wanted to say something about Madame uh, Boogaloff. It's oh, historic over the years. It's kind of hard to tell which side she's on sometimes. Uh, because, I mean, she's like, she loves her son, Gumar, but Gumar is cursed and becomes a, a demon-like character called Poroscoro at times. Yeah. And, um, um, but it's, it's hard to kind of tell where she, she's in her own world of magic and, and mysticism and stuff. And it's, it's really a, an interesting character. Yeah. But I, ultimately, I have decided that she's on the side of the good guys, but she well, we'll ask Larry into, that. We'll see here. Seems to um, wander off into black magic at times. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here we are. Yeah, I bring along jump. I had to move over here because of the uh, the cord. My yeah. cord. My my plug-in is here. Let me get myself together. Hang on a second. It's gonna take me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> We're patient. We've been through it all with this show. Oh yeah. <laughs> I like this on the fly stuff here. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> We're so professional. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a proper... That's us. Professional all the way. I don't have a proper... Uh, well, that looks good. Looks thing. good, Larry. Mm -hmm. okay. There we go. Larry, did you hear what I was... Yes. 
Did you hear what I was saying about Madame Boogaloo? Boogaloo, yes. You heard what I was, you what I was saying? about her son, Gumar, huh? Right, and it's well, sometimes it's hard to tell which side is she, she's on because she, she ventures into black magic, and her own son is, is a yes. demon at times. Um, Horace girl. Well, Ultimately, we, it seems that she loves her son, Gumar. There's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but she's like almost dabbled too much in the dark side. Yes. Mm -hmm. She has a curse. She has a curse where she has to bring demons into the world on occasion. And, all, and she uses her own son to channel this terrible demon, Horus Guru. Yeah. Here's some Horus pictures Goro. of him. He's, yeah. That's he's him. got... Eight dog and cat heads on his back and a snake for a tail, and any bites from them give people cholera and plague. So, in <laughs> fact, my brand new story I'm working on right now, he's missing, <laughs> and he ends up in a factory, and they're working on these uh, biological agents in canisters. Uh, and I wrote this in 1997. Oh, <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> Well, you know, yeah. well, I read this. I read my script, and I says. I just have to update this a little bit because she deals with this detective to try and find him, Detective Kalowski. And they'd already right. met in my series, but they were a brand new. And I said, just like about 80% of it's the same. And I can't believe I wrote this like 24 years ago. And I says, oh, like there's a plague happening on the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> kind of yeah. And here's a, here's a little picture of Poro Skiro, if you can see him. Yeah. 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 Wow. And that's and what, watercolor? With the cats watercolor. on his back. That is a, acrylic on... Um, cardboard Ooh, okay nice. i know you do a lot of painting yeah, it looks great and th this was uh oil pastel oh okay that one wow so i did some, a few things with this guy just to let you know <laughs> but well, yeah she's a lot of fun i, I think Bogle is interesting because she's like um complex and she talks about the old right. country a lot you know mm -hmm. the first that first issue she read about a, a romance she was having with this man from years ago and this fellow mm -hmm. made of the wind showed up but she yeah, must be about 150 it. years old or something, oh, right? Like seven, seven or 800 years, maybe. Seven or 800 <laughs> years. Okay, yeah, I knew she yeah. was fairly oh, yeah. old. Yeah. She's getting up there. Yeah. She's getting up there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, her kids, so, you know, they get around 200. They're going through the terrible 200s. Yeah, yeah. She's got Gamar. Gamar's her son. <laughs> her. He doesn't look a day over 30. He's always like 30, yeah. no matter what. <laughs> right, so, he never ages, but, yeah. But he's kind of, he's like her... Um, her, her connection to the world, basically, because she's kind of keeps to her tea shop and she she doesn't like to deal with the ordinary folk very much, except to get money out of them and tell fortunes right. and stuff like that. But he, he's more of a connection to the world kind of stuff. And he's a little rebellious at times, too, as you can tell. Yeah. But, but he's he often gives into his mother and supports her. And I think it's a, a really complex, nice relationship. It's worked out really well. I like I like Booga a lot. She's uh, well, done a lot about, of her. Uh... What about Lou Brown? Can you tell uh, us Lou a little bit about Lou Brown? Lou Brown. Um, he's been known as a, I have some uh, book here, Lou Brown, actually. Like this. Yeah. this was a, years oh, ago. I remember that. <laughs> oh, you remember that one? Oh, the, the eye creatures got yeah. up at that point. The yeah. eye. He, he was like an ordinary fellow who uh, has supernatural adventures. And I think, right. again, the connection from one thing to another, Zooey, mm -hmm. Halfway through my series of 72 issues when I was a kid, he became a human being. And I will say that Lou Brown is sort of the evolution of this guy, Rudolph, who was Zooey at the time. Oh. Now, but I would say kind of like. Okay. Kind of like the same cutter character. He's sort of bewildered. His very first adventure, he was he went on a vacation. It's called Escape, and he's all bothered. And he says, I'm there for said I should get away. And this is skeleton shows up on the train and starts tormenting him and only he can see right. the skeleton so it obviously things happen so a lot of odd things would happen to him and i say well god he should be in therapy so he got to seeing dr young dr charles young tell me about your you will tell me about a dream please he's this european gentleman it's like carl young of course so then dr young came up oh. and lou brown of course, you see what happens here. Lou Brown met Boogala at one time yeah. years ago. That's what I thought. Yeah. And turns out he had housed this spirit of something called Avatar, an owl man. And she got Pearl Skiro to battle with him back and forth. <laughs> now, again, I can ramble on. The owl man goes way back to the 80s for me of doing bird like people because in my paintings, oh, fantasy work. So I always did 
one thing fed another, and it always it always goes that way. And mm. um, so, but actually, what happened is also, if I may say, so that it, it got established that they were in the same city, and I call it the city of Brookston. So finally, uh, Dr. Young knows Bukula, and we'd have a series of uh, the case book of Dr. Young. He would talk about people he knew right. cases, <laughs> and then you had. Crow's Curios, which was this Mr. Alistair Crow had a shop of uh, curious right. objects, and those always had stories. And he knew Bogle because Gumar would bring in objects to get money off of them. And, and then Detective Kolowski, yeah. whose mother was Magda, very uh, imperiously, almost like a Gumar Bogle thing going on there, a Polish immigrant. And then um, this is amazing. Lou Brown's, Lou Brown's neighbor, is. Joe Carbone. Joe Carbone was an engineer. Uh, electrical engineer, and he worked at BSI, Brookston Scientific Institute, which of course had all sorts of adventures as well, and it's a kind of a devious scientific place, and I could go on, there's lots of other characters too who were... The amount but, of thought that you put into this is just amazing, <laughs> Larry. It's, it's an amazingly amazing. complex universe, uh, everything yeah. ties together, and yeah, I, I can't believe my... how prolific you've been and how many comics and zines <laughs> you've produced since 1973. Uh, how, do you have any idea how many you've published? It's been an awful lot. Uh, self-published books? Self-published, yeah. Let's it's see, there's 72 lot. issues of, uh, 72, I, you'd have to add them up. 72 of uh, Tales of Fantasy. The Comet had 10. Um, of course, these new books, I must have 10 more there as well. I yeah. did two issues of Sphinx, which was my personal experiences. They were like writings of my life. Mm. A couple issues, three issues of that, actually. Mysterious it's Adventures. Be hundreds. Oh, about a hundred, at least a hundred, at least. Hundred, yeah. At well, least, I'd say. definitely one of, one of the most uh, most ambitious uh, publishers around. And everything oh, yeah. you publish, it, it totally comes from your heart and your soul. They're they're all totally entertaining, and you can't stop reading. And some of the stories are quite long, but you once you get in there, you're hooked, and you yeah. just have to keep reading. I, Should I, was I tell you? Uh huh. Okay, you go ahead. Go ahead. I was, oh, gonna I was just. I wanted to say something. Ask you about Zooey. You mentioned Zooey. Is this yes. your oldest, your oldest character? Well, Cloud and Fog predates him. <laughs> Cloud right. and Fog was my first doing, character from one You year. were doing it's, comics. You were doing comics like 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 some of us did online, notebook paper, or just whatever, mm -hmm. way before you ever actually started publishing. Yes, I did. In fact, I happen to have some right here, my stack, and I can find them. Look at it here. Have a, oh, here he is. Yes. As a matter of fact, I have here a Zooey comic from 1964. It's wow. on Big Chief Indian paper, Tales of Fantasy. Oh, my God. Right. Then, look at this. If you can see this. Yeah. That's amazing. Wow. The early days. So he, 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 met, the, paper. he hmm. met the Silver Witch. This is Big Chief Indian paper. If you remember oh. that. Yeah, it's like yeah, this, I think so. Newsprint with green lines. Newsprint with lines, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Wow, that's yeah, and that so, so cool that you still have those. He actually, I have all all seven two. Here's a later one. When I was fourteen, I actually graduated to more uh, uh, better quality paper without the lines. So how, in fact, how, how was that reproduced? How how did you? Original. This is the original. These are my homemade. Oh, those comics. are original. Yes, okay. it's when I made these as a kid. When I was fourteen. I see. I see. Sixty-eight. Now. Okay. And actually, I'll tell you the story briefly. The story about this. Uh, I had this on another one, and two boys in art class showed Mr. Sather, my art teacher, this stuff. You know, one day, he says, "Larry, how come you didn't show me this stuff?" I said, "It's not schoolwork." All of a sudden, <laughs> I became this star artist <laughs> in class, and I was sort of mediocre <laughs> from what I was doing for what he wanted. He gave me he, what was really his his mentorship. Uh, gave me a taste for all kinds of art. He's like, let's do painting, let's do learn anatomy, let's do some fashion design or ceramics and stuff like this. And so by the time I graduated, I got two awards as uh, high marks, you know, and I barely graduated because my other subjects I sucked at. <laughs> yeah, that's where I was. <laughs> but you know, and I was, I just tell you briefly, this is how I feel about art. It's like. You know, if you don't do well in art or music, well, it's just not your thing. If you don't well do well in science or math, you're not working hard enough. You're lazy. Well, excuse <laughs> me. You know, when I was 15, I'm going to brag, I could put a book together with the contents and, and uh, ads and, and text and 
you know, whole design and stories that made sense. In yeah. the beginning, middle, and end, you learn that in the eighth grade, how to do a short story, right. characterization, all of that. And I went on to work in newspapers. I was a production guy when I was 17. I started doing my hometown newspaper. So I had wow. this systems I could put things together in publications. And yet, you know, I, I, was, I think about that as a, as a kid. I say, God, I thought it was dumb because I, <laughs> I didn't do so well in trigonometry. Oh, Jesus. Or calculus. Uh, you think I ever use this stuff? I'm <laughs> you not an no engineer. use for it. Yeah. yeah. I know. If you're an engineer, you do it, you know, you're a scientist, mm -hmm. but I'm, not everybody goes into that kind of stuff. Right. But yep. so, and I wanted to be a teacher when I grew up. So that, that's what I wanted to do. And, and that's that happened what you in did. Recent, recent years, recent, not, just the past 10 or 12 years. Yeah. So you only been oh, yeah, teaching, been teaching that 10 long. or 12 years? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a recent thing since no. we moved here to, we moved here to Hyde Park or Borough of Boston, you know, it's like a lot of big cities that eat up the towns around them. And I got involved with our uh, art center here and started teaching. And I did a comic book course for five years there, which was mm. a lot of fun. And I wrote about it in uh, Alan Sisson's magazine here. Collector's Link Fancy, if you've seen right. this. Yeah. I think Steve has seen this mm. one. Yeah, okay. I have that issue. Yeah, Larry oh, Anderson. Wow. And I wrote about my experiences nice there. Thank you. I, I did that one. But I did that for five years, and then I, uh, I've also done a lot of drawing, and I teach now at a retirement community there as well, and we do a lot of uh, watercolor and uh, drawing, and lately I'm doing collage there. In fact, this morning, I put together this collage, yeah. which I thought was a fun of some horsies and lines and things, Yeah. and this is when I really ramble out of it, because <laughs> when, uh -huh. when I can't sleep at night, I think about my projects. I say, well, you're going to put some horse and put some lines this way and put some lines that way and have images overlapping. And I get up and I do it. So that's, yeah. that's how I, I do this kind of thing. And Reminds me of this. <laughs> Horseman. Horseman, <laughs> yeah. This, your most recent issue. Yeah, oh, yeah. we just reviewed that one. Yeah. I this is great. The, the, the Horseman is, is a wordless comic and it's in full color. It's beautiful. Yeah. But Horseman wanders from all these different fantasy realms from one to another, you know, at one point he's under a goldfish bowl here. Uh, <laughs> he ends up in, in a, like a nursery where there's a little girl and a, and a dollhouse. Well, of course he ends up inside the dollhouse and, uh, but he just, it's, it's like a dream. It's like a yeah. dream. Good. This is a, a character that's only been around for what, three or four years. You just recently came up with Horseman. You want to hear the story behind Horseman? Let's hear sure. it. Okay. <laughs> I think was it in, in fact, you can see my sketchbook drawings of Horseman on my YouTube channel, which is Larry Johnson, and it has a Zooey icon. You just look for Zooey's picture, and you'll find, uh, where is it? You know, just look for Zooey and my name, and you can get it. But Horseman, in 2016 summer, I was going to do a course for kids at our art center, and I said, what are 10-year-old boys like? I said, I know. I said, Let's do a poster for a science fiction story. You're going to make it up and all this stuff. So, and I like everything you're going to teach, you have to do first. So I said, okay, I got to start drawing this stuff. And I'm going to do it. So I started drawing my sketch of wolfmen on horses chasing stuff in the woods or stuff. And so, so I started doing this whole drawings of this. And there was this creature in the woods, this, this dark man with antlers that was looking at them all the time. And so I went on for about 20 or 30 of these for a while. I thought, well, I'm sort of done with this. Then sort of this man that was evolved into Horseman. And the original Horseman was a man with a horse's head who had antlers. Oh, so, right. And I went up to 160 of those drawings until fall of the second, second year, 17. And I started Horseman series number two in my sketchbook, which is right here. Now, these drawings that I put up on Facebook and in on my uh, YouTube page, start in this sketchbook. Okay, because nice... I see the ones on Facebook. Uh, yeah. 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 So you see all this. So uh -huh. uh, and amazing. That's amazing. Work. So I'm up to 196 on this one. I think I'll go up to at least 200. Oh, <laughs> and you sort of amazed me. <laughs> and what what I liked about this? Now get this, get this. I had stopped doing Tales of Fantasy comic books like at the end of 15. And I was doing a little bit of Broken B, the Western series in the beginning, but I wanted mm -hmm. to do something that didn't have a story. 
to get away from the conventional plot kind of stuff. So I said, how can you do things that are not, that sort of go into a story, but don't? And I started following, you know, sort of follow themes throughout these things. I say, oh, he, he, he meets mushroom people for a while, or, you know, or there's some industrial stuff happening in the background, or here's some alien things, or he's doing, riding fish all the time or something, whatever. And, and the most disparate elements together. And how do you do it? And let me, how do you add on someone else's influence to you? I had a friend, Rosemary, in fact, she died, uh, last year and we did a memorial for her and she did collages she would do like uh national geographic stuff but she put this weird stuff together you know you're like here's a sand pit in a church and the uh, uh, laundry line and and, and <laughs> construction guys all together and it somehow it made sense and i go and i'm biking along you know i said well i'm seeing here's here's some construction here's a hole in the road here's a laundry so she's seen things and so horseman was the same sort of thing and we would i would she loved horseman because mm. we would sit at the coffee shop and look at this stuff. And so how can you put disparate things together to make them almost like sense? And you say dreamlike, that's pretty much. And what I like is I think on your review, you say, Lerner, you might have said that it, it, it almost becomes a story, but then it goes somewhere else. Yeah. And I think that's what I like about it. Yeah. That I'm not following, okay, here's your plot. You got to, you were foreshadowing <laughs> and you got to have ABC and then you got to wrap it up right. and tell enough to make sense. No, you don't. Life doesn't go like that. So Horseman's kind of fun. And yeah. some people are really weird. Some people weirded out by him. Oh, he's got <laughs> little tight whiteies on. I said, well, you want him naked? I says, if it comes up, it's not going to go over big. <laughs> Furthermore, you can put him on, you can put him on Facebook. Yeah, right. <laughs> Facebook, is gotta, they're going to get after you with any nudity. Believe me. <laughs> right. But so, so he's been a lot of fun. And what's great about him is, I think three people have said, you think about dialogue. What can you do for uh, words? And I thought about this. I, I never, amazingly, I never think of words for him ever. Oh. You say, oh, he, he's going to be doing this, doing that. And there's no words whatsoever. In fact, that's when I don't sleep at night. You know, it's like, well, Horseman will be doing this, and, and this stuff will be in this corner, <laughs> and he'll, he'll meet this thing, and then something else will be coming after him. Yeah. That <laughs> But it's, but it's never... amazing. It's put together very well. I mean, it's amazingly a stream of consciousness, but mm -hmm. one thing leads to another and another and another. I mean, it, it makes sense as you're looking along, you know, ah. he's in the ocean, he's in the sky, he's here. Yeah, he's, he's there. out everywhere. But, going in. It do, but yeah. it's stream of consciousness. How do you uh, make sense? How do you color your artwork? Uh, Photoshop. Photoshop. I, I, scan, I scan in my stuff. Okay. And I... Uh, I have never mastered Photoshop. <laughs> and I'll tell you, every page in that Google, it takes five to six hours or so of doing that oh, because man. it's wow. immense work. Wow. It's more than the, the drawing and inking of it, believe me. Yeah. But when you do it, and you, may, you can go into effects and things, but I don't go that too much. I do some, some like shading. You can go into this dry uh, media tool, which is like a brush. And I, I might do like some of her skin, you know how you do like some uh, modeling a little bit mm -hmm. like that maybe. And but also, what you have to do when you do bucket fill, the problem with that, the pixels, you get a little tiny white line around the black line where the color goes. So you've got to go in there with your pen and go. Oh, you really? You got to carefully oh. go through and make sure it's all there. There are other programs like a vector. I don't know. Vector means here's this computer land where you can blow it up big and, and the pixels never show. It's like. Big or small, hmm. it can go up to billboard size and it's always good, but I'm hmm. not that way. It's like 600 DPI. Well, I could go into technical stuff, but I scan it in and then you can uh, you clone off your colors and things. And it's a whole process how I do that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, but um, and I do it for Kablam as well. And so you have to, I scan them in a 600 DPI and I put them in at uh, 6.25 wide, inches wide and 9.75 mm -hmm. tall. And then you have to get them down to 300 DPI, resize, and then you got to do LZW compression oh because they're, they're like 60, 60 MBs and they've got to, they, they got to go down to like th three or four once you compress them. And what's good about compressing, uh -huh. they don't lose any quality. Yeah. So well, things when you're working in, working in Photoshop, you blow up your work like five or 600 percent and God, it's like, why wasn't I more careful with my inking here? Christ, this is like a mess. You can fix, fix, you can get really crazy. Fix every little line. <laughs> mm. 
which actually, when you get done, is really, really beautiful once you get done, but it, take, it's, it takes a certain obsession. So I get up in the morning and I do that for a few hours. Wow. Every day. Obsession. <laughs> I, I never have that kind of, I wouldn't be able to do I that. I wouldn't, I'd, yeah. I don't beyond, know. Beyond me. <laughs> that's amazing. That's a, Steve, we've come a long way from the ditto, the working uh, yeah, on his math. Def, yeah. <laughs> I got one. Just I'll, since you said that, I will show that uh, this is one of your old ditto zines. This one is the comet number two. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. My copy is a little little stained. I think there was some scotch tape here Looks for like some reason. Looks like the shadow. Yeah. <laughs> that is the yeah, shadow. It is the shadow. Yeah. It, is, it is the shadow. Yeah. Okay. The comet number two, uh, July nineteen seventy four. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Living Purple Ditto, which has faded out over the years. Um, yeah. But it's just, and even then, you know, the stuff is a little, this, you've got some surreal stuff here. Yeah. This page oh, wow. here, which is wordless. And I'm having a hard time holding the right position. But hard, to, hard to see that because of the ditto. Yeah, because it's faded, because it's ditto. Yeah. yeah. And um, it was a long <laughs> time ago. But already he was experiment. You were already experimenting uh, with that uh, sort of a, you know, wordless fantasy. At uh, that so you, age that you were, I've said this before, I never dreamed you could make your own comic book. I drew cartoons and little drawings yeah. and things, but I never thought of making a comic book. I didn't think that was possible, you know, so I never did it. <laughs> you mean uh, publishing or just been doing your own just, homemade stuff? Just making a comic book. I didn't think you could do oh. that. You know, I knew you could draw panels and that, I never did it because I didn't know what I would ever do with it. But uh, well, when I was never knew you could make actually print a comic book. You know, ah. never knew that until I was about fifty, <laughs> maybe yeah. when I discovered small press. You're you're a late bloomer. I was a late one. Yeah, I came into it late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I was so proud publishing. of myself after listening to Larry. You know, his volume of work. I did sixteen pages in a year. I thought I really. I really have done something here. <laughs> I got it all done. I got it all inked. It's ready to go to the printer. <laughs> but once you get started, that's the rest of your life. You, yeah. you know, you're there. It's a lifelong yeah. obsession. Yeah. From, from, that's it. <laughs> so you can never stop now. <laughs> no. <laughs> I do lots of other art too. So it's not just. Not I just see your art. paintings are beautiful. Oh, you do. The paintings well, thank are beautiful. You. Yeah. Thank you. Really nice. Yeah. I like nature. Deal. I do that. Yeah, go out and uh, yeah, the do you paint paintings. right on the site or do you bring it home? Uh, a picture. Both. Both. I, I actually do a lot of on site drawing. Yeah. Because you know, we live near these woods. That yeah. Are really great. And in yeah. fact, that's what brought us down here to Hyde Park because I just love the woods down here. Yeah. I must have done 150 drawings in the woods in the past 20 some odd years. And I also, I also take my sketchbook out uh, to the city and just do buildings and mm -hmm. bridges and all sorts of other stuff I like as well. And, uh, it's amazing to me. You, you, I go talk to other artists, and I, I remember talking to artists who is, you do landscapes and comic books? How can you do that? They say it doesn't make sense. Yeah. But you know, the funny thing is, as an artist, and I, I just like experimenting with a lot of things, is that, I'll tell you just briefly, in Boston, I've been to open studio events for like the past 25 years, and I know loads and loads and loads of artists, actually probably 100 at least. And I will tell you that it's, I could caught on, a hand, on my one hand about the number of artists who do painting and other stuff who are into comics. They're not yeah. doing it. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a whole separate world, I guess. And you might get artists who are also are painters who might be musicians or people who do poetry and printmaking, or they might do uh, photography and collage, mm -hmm. something else. But I can only know just a handful that yeah. do the there other are, stuff. I know that there are... Uh comic books that are painted in watercolor mm -hmm. a lot of them and i even i thought about doing that but i've never done it but i've sure thought about it because i do watercolors here's the cover for broken b number uh -huh. two which is broken in watercolor bee. that's a watercolor know. okay yes yeah. mm -hmm. a lot of covers are in watercolor yeah that's beautiful yeah, that's really so, nice i've done some of that the colors came out a little different but that's what yeah it's different up. Yeah. You try to get as close as possible. Yeah. They did a good job with Zooey yeah. because I told him to. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, I gave him a, actually, I gave him the Photoshop number of that color. I want him his blue and yellow and red to do well. Hang on just a second. <laughs> okay. 
I, I don't I don't have my copy of Broken Bee right now, but uh, uh, we just reviewed it. We just reviewed number two. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that, that's cool. It's a science fiction uh, fantasy adventure. It's in uh, the Wild West. It's a Wild oh, Western yeah. fantasy SF adventure. Uh, fascinating the next, stuff. Are the, the hardest person, things in the world to draw? Cowboy hats. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're <laughs> murder. They Horses. are murder. Oh, I get criticized for the cowboy hat. Yeah. They're floating. They're not the right size. And all. Oh, Jeez. my gosh. <laughs> it is tough. Yeah. I was cleaning somebody's house, and this guy had a whole collection of them. I put them on my head, and I took loads of selfies. I said, now, I either got to get this help. sitting, sitting so just hard right. Draw. <laughs> you got this swinging like this and all. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> you try to be consistent as you can. Yeah. It, anyway, book and be number three. I'm, I've got one page to finish. Is about the mechanical man. The, this right. guy's up at the drive oh, right now. Yeah. And he, yeah. he comes across this steam-driven thing. <laughs> that's <laughs> and that's a whole issue that's going to come out. Yeah. Probably I'm saying you previewed days. that. You had a couple of drawings. I wonder. Yes. One or two yeah. I think you talked that. about that in the mechanical issue. man. Yeah. yeah. So looking yeah. forward to that. Looking one. forward to that one. I, yeah. Well, I did. Uh, one of the early issues of Broken Bee was Tastes Like Chicken. It was like this this guy <laughs> met a T Rex in the, yeah. in, the in the desert. <laughs> so that was a, that was one of the, the oh, one of the boy. debut stories. <laughs> and so so I got I must have about half a dozen stories to write still on Broken Bee. I've got loads of things happening with that. Yeah. Uh, the ranch foreman. I'll, t I'll tell you briefly. I don't want to I don't want to go on too much about it, but but that's one of my many projects that I'm doing, as you can tell. Yeah. Yeah, I would but, say you have a few projects going, Larry. <laughs> always. <laughs> Shall I show you something else up here? This is my preview copy of Zooey number two, which is Ooh. at the printers right now, called King of the Zooeries. Because mm. these people come and kidnap Zooey and take him and he's into some great ritual and all. And I've, that'll be out in a few weeks, I think, because uh, I should be getting my copies pretty soon oh, for that. Oh, wow. Okay. As well. And that's mm. uh, I kind of slowed myself down a little bit. Like, really? So much <laughs> but, all right. Cool out. Yeah, this is, cool out. This is, that's, that's why I think that's why I'm doing horseman these days, because I think he's kind of like a comfort food. You're just like, yeah, okay, yeah. just slow down and do concentrate on him for a while. Yeah. And here's a here's an interesting thing I thought of. Alice in Wonderland. I did these drawings. 22 drawings of Alice based on the Tenniel drawings mm -hmm. and mm. I just put this this is an experimental book I may print soon and in fact these drawings are on my YouTube channel as a slideshow as well right. and I thought because I when I was a little kid beautiful my mother had a, an encyclopedia from the supermarket that you used to get one one book a week for a dollar <laughs> back yeah. in the grand yeah. And I know there was some Alice drawings in there. And of course, you know, when you're five and six, you just study these things. You pour over these things so much. And I love this stuff so much yeah. that I thought, oh, that's really I, love, nice. I, I just think that the Tenniel illustrations to Mr. Carroll's works are a perfect marriage of words and pictures in, in the history of publishing. Mm -hmm. There's probably better stuff, but, you know, this is like up there as some of the best illustrated book, I think, in history. And so I was. I wanted to say, what would be my right. color? Um, these were color pencil things I did over the oh. course of a couple of years. And so I just put them together, and I just did the quote that went with that picture. Here's the Duchess and her ugly baby and all. And so that I may come out with. Uh, mm, I thought I might get it great. before Christmas, but I figured I needed to wait on that too. So that that <laughs> might be a special publication. It's not a comic book, no. but it's a collection of art that's yeah. kind of related to it. Sure. That looks amazing. The, that looks amazing. The, the artwork is true to the to Lewis Carroll's original. It's yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. I thought it had a UFO symbol. You put a UFO symbol on the front cover. I noticed that right I, off the bat. Ah, you got it. I, I, We've I, been involved with got... that group for a long, long. I'm not going to talk about the UFO much, although I'm the chairman, you know, and uh, prone to, prone to hype it from time to time. But you really, uh, you're one of the longest lived. Uh, one of the in fact, you were one of the first members of the UFO when I became chairman in right. 72, 73. So you've been with That's it a long God, time. Hey. Off and on, that. yeah. 70s, yeah. wow. So, and, uh, I think I rejoined uh, 10 years ago or so. 
Mm -hmm. Can I brag? I've never missed a column. <laughs> no, I can always count on you. And your columns are amazing. Sometimes they go on for six or seven or eight pages or whatever. And rambling. Just, it's, it's good rambling. It's good rambling. You really go in depth with your reviews uh, of the zines and stuff. Um, you know, you're, you're not only a, a brilliant uh, artist, but you're a brilliant writer as well. Uh, pretty much a, you're, you're darn me. talented, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's great that you've been involved, that you've been there for so long, that you're still there. So it's amazing that that group is still here after yeah. um, fifty some odd years. You know, started by Carl Gafford way back then, but I, we've been doing it a long time. I am, I'm getting, thinking maybe we ought to yeah. kind of wrap this up. And that, you can have me well, back if you like. I could go all afternoon, but I know people have things to do and stuff like that. So um, tell you yeah. what. You want me back in the future and talk about collaborations I've done with a lot of people over the years. No, so we, we can uh, fact, always have good. you back, Larry. Just, you could be just a just regular. This morning, <laughs> just this morning, I was talking with, I was just reading this strip I illustrated written by Steve Keeter called The Phoenix, which was, oh, yeah. Jim May published. <laughs> it's that this guy yeah. was a bomb and he was going to blow up the Right, the, the living bomb or whatever it was. I remember and that the, one that you drew it. The Phoenix goes to see President Nixon and he, he starts up the tape recorder. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! You added that. That wasn't in the script. Uh, you put uh, that tape recorder in there like in the Watergate days. <laughs> right? He was taping everything. I, I said the script, and he's talking to the president. But Larry sneaked in a little tape recorder, reel to reel, in the corner. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we go, we go way back, way back yeah. in the old days. But yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad you had me here today. Oh, and, uh, we really appreciate it, Larry. Thanks yeah, for doing it. Mm. My pleasure. Even the technical stuff figured this out. It's yeah. Like, I'm I'm old. And this is like, Jesus, it's like awful. I think, I think we're all getting old, Larry. We're all old. <laughs> I just turned 68, so. Oh, okay. Well, but I feel like I don't think any different than I'm when I'm 16, for crying out loud. I still have the <laughs> same interest, same. And, Steve, you get on your bike just like I do all the time. Yeah, I ride my bike. You know, yeah, yeah. You, gotta, you gotta keep that that uh that youthful enthusiasm. You gotta keep those dreams alive. You gotta keep yep. that energy alive. You just you gotta keep don't don't lose stuff. what you what you've always had. Don't lose it. <laughs> right. Keep on, keep on enjoying life. Yeah. yeah, I agree. All right, we're gonna I'll shut this down and uh, we'll see everybody in the next episode. We'll put Larry's uh, info down in the description so you can contact him. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>